Hello, this is James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part 24 of my Iron Man Hulkbuster inspired suit, which is inspired by the suit we've seen so far in the trailer for Age of Ultron, which comes out on May the 1st. So today I'm going to be continuing to frame out the design. Last time I worked on these thigh pieces, some of the torso here, um, we've rather neglected the back, so we're going to turn it around and have a look at that. And I'm also going to try and work out how the opening shoulder pods um, interact with the back and how they interact with the helmet, which opens as well. So let's spin it round and we'll have a look at what we've got. We haven't seen a great deal of the back, but here it is. So obviously that's completely open with virtually no features at all. So I've got my snowboard bindings at the bottom there with their ejecting mechanisms operated by cables. The back of the thigh is ready to continue. And um, up the top there you can see right into the torso and it's absolutely open so I can climb in and out. So I previously made a back door mechanism, let's have a look at that. I previously made this which is a, a sort of gull wing door arrangement which I took off when I made this whole suit wider. So I need to stick that back on then I need to do something about these cables so we can control the doors and then we can build the back of the suit then we can actually build the frame on this in two halves and then once we've done that we can sort out the back of the arms so the triceps and we can sort out how the doors which swing up and down will interact with the back of the thighs so by then we should have a fairly good idea of what the back looks like and it's obviously going to be substantially bigger than this is so the whole suit is going to be fairly deep front to back so once we've done that we can turn it round to the side and sort of see that back contour. I think it's going to be a bit of a hunchback, including the shoulders, which is kind of how Hulkbuster looks. So if you remember, I created this double action assembly, um, which is controlled with bicycle brake cords, and those were going to be on solenoid releases. For now, I've just hooked them on so it can work. So it's a bit hit and miss, but the aim is when they're released, the mechanism pops out slightly, and then it um, hinges up, and it's probably not going to go much further than that because obviously the doors are quite wide and if they go all the way up then they'll hit each other at the top because these things are wide in this direction. So um, we need to uh, plan the whole contour of the back mounted on here and for now I'm just going to leave those hooked on and eventually we'll do a some sort of servo release or a solenoid release mechanism which means that basically I can trigger it remotely to get in and then when I'm in the suit I can pull them down and hook them back on there and then I can release them again either manually if I get stuck in the suit or remotely if I wish electronically. So I've got both options there for safety. Obviously you don't want to be stuck in the suit when it's on fire, especially if it's the batteries that have caught fire and none of the electronics work and you can't get out. So um, let's have a look at some CAD and try and work out the contours of the back of the suit here. Here's my design for the back panels. These are actually really big. They're about half a meter wide and a bit longer. And they're gonna sit just below those rotating pieces on the two wooden sticks. And I've also got this cover, um, which I'm not sure if that's what it's gonna look like to cover the actual um, hubs on the rotating mechanisms. So these are sat just below that and the cover covers them. It might be a different shape and there's probably not enough clearance in fact of them to open. So that will need to be redesigned. Uh, but I just wanted to put that there to show what the look of the back um, is roughly like. There's some also some features that will be down the very outsides. Um, but for now I'm pretty happy with those contours. So that's the basic aim of it. Um, these are obviously solid lumps but we need to make a frame. So I've cut this all up into slices and shelled every piece out and cut it all up into frames. So it's a bit like um, an aeroplane wing in a way. So um, those are all the pieces that we need to print and then those need arranging on the bed so they're all flat and they can be printed out. And this is what it looks like arranged and I've started to arrange some of those parts. Um, you can see the parts towards the middle there. I've uh, started to clump them together so they all fit on one print bed. But we're looking at about four whole print bed prints to get all these parts done for each side. So eight whole bed prints all together which is going to take a while to do. So let's get those printing and see what they look like in real life. So I have both Lulzbot Tazzies working on the pieces. Obviously I've got to print off uh, this whole thing twice. So I've got to do both of the halves for the two doors. So it's going to probably take several days of printing. So 
So I've printed all the parts out. There's quite a lot of printed parts there, probably more than in the last Hulkbuster episode so far, and I've still got more to do in this one. So I started labelling them all with different colours, different colour pens, well, red and blue, and I realised if I just lay them on the floor I don't need to identify them, so I've laid the rest of the parts out. And these are going to get acetone welded together now, so have a look at the last couple of parts for the process. But basically this is ABS plastic which dissolves in acetone so I can chemically weld the parts together and we'll get that assembled. Here is one of the sides out of two which is all attached together. It's pretty rigid. Um, I've also put this bracket piece on so I can attach it to the back. Um, it's pretty good. Um, it's a pretty good structure. It's a little bit heavier than I thought it would be. It's all 15% infill. Um, but on the whole it's really rigid. Um, this would be the way I'd print a car if I was going to do one. But I don't think I should take on any projects right now like that. So um, let's get that mounted on the back of the suit and we'll turn it to, in the profile and see what it looks like. So here it is attached to the suit. I've got the two halves there on the wooden levers. And if I unhook these, which is a bit tricky at the moment, I need to retension the bungee so they spring up because it doesn't work quite that well. Um, there's only one tiny bit of bungee at the top there pulling them together. But essentially the plan is to have them lever right up so that I can then get into the suit um, and then when I'm in I'll pull down these cords and lock them to their electronic releases instead of these screws that I've got here uh, which will lock them in place until I release them and then they will pop up again let's just hook that one back on there it's a bit tight at the moment and that should hold them in the middle and I put these brackets in which basically are end stops which hold them together so they align fairly well so I'm going to turn that around sideways and we'll have a look at the profile. All right, so we can see the legs are quite skinny still front to back and the top has quite a lot loaded on it. So we've got some more filling pieces, of course, but there we go. So the back is hopefully not looking too much like a mutant turtle. There's some pieces that need to go in here. And of course the big shoulders, but on the whole and the cover on the top. So it has a bit of a hunchback, but on the whole, I'm pretty happy with the size of it front to back anyway. So there we go, so next we're going to have a look at hopefully the opening shoulders which will give it that big rounded shoulder which will um, hopefully finish off that contour. I'm precariously balanced up on things again. So what we need to do um, is put that big shoulder shape in that kind of meets with the contour of the back there which you can probably just see um, and covers this part, it comes a bit higher than the shoulder bell but it also allows the helmet to um, hinge open. So. This is a previous piece to mount the helmet panel on, which is going to get reinforced with um, a larger, stronger piece to hold this, which was the side of the helmet, which starts roughly here and will hinge back like so. So obviously what we need to do is um, have the shoulder move out of the way when it does so, because it's going to be higher than the helmet. Um, we also want to put weapons and things in the shoulders. So somehow we need to make a, a mechanism which will allow the whole shoulder to lift right up out of the way so that the helmet can open and or weapons can pop out of the um, opened part of the shoulder um, because otherwise the helmet won't be too open like that because the shoulder will be in the way um, and there'll be nowhere to put the weapons. So uh, we need to kind of come up with this cunning raising and opening mechanism that puts the shoulder right out somewhere but it can't go backwards on a hinge because it will hit the um, back flaps as they open so it can only really go sideways or forwards, but then that would be silly. So uh, let's have a look at some lever mechanisms, see if we can work out how to make that work. So here's my prototype mechanism, which of course I've built in Lego to sort out the angles. So what's going to happen is, uh, this panel here represents the actual shoulder. Um, the hinge here is the existing piece of studding, which the arm is hinged on at the shoulder, which runs from the front to the back of the suit. Uh, this rail along the bottom is actually the piece of silver wood along the back and then we need some sort of runner which will be a wheel in a groove I expect um, which goes that way and I've sorted out all these angles, some of these pieces are longer than they need to be so if you can imagine the shoulder bell being roughly here it means that the shoulder can have the shoulder shell mounted on it and it's nice and um, flat and then the helmet is roughly here somewhere and as this slides along then the shoulder bell lifts right up and we can have weapons mounted on the underside which can then fire forwards um, and that means that basically that thing is clear of the shoulder and it's well clear of the helmet opening 
So this is going to be a mechanism fitted at the back of the suit. It's going to be made of quite thick sections this way, so that it's nice and stable, and that will hold the um, entire shoulder shell. So hopefully if we can uh, make those holes just the right size for 8mm studding, we can make sure the thing's not too flexible um, front to back. So that's what we really need. So let's have a look at some CAD for the lever parts, which are going to be roughly twice as big as this. Um, works out quite well. So let's have a look at that. Here are the pieces for the lever mechanism. So the top and bottoms are these double pieces which are linked at the ends, either one end or both ends, and that helps keep both sides nice and stable and locked together. I've made sure the holes are quite tight tolerant so we can put 8mm studding through and that will also help um, hold those together. The two shorter levers are the ones that go through the middle of those and one has a smaller hole in the ends and that is to screw in a roller to run along the piece of wood in another rail which I'm yet to design. So we'll print those out and see how well it works. So here are my 3D printed levers, this one is all in pieces. Um, I've sanded the top layer there of the 3D print to make it smooth where that texture is so they slide nicely together. And this one I've assembled so the hole here is where it fits onto the um, existing piece of studding on the shoulder. Then this will slide along and that will lift the actual shoulder, not the shoulder bell, but the shoulder up and above the shoulder bell. And then the weapons will be facing out of there facing forward and that will lift well clear of the helmet. So I need to make that sliding rail, which will probably have a wheel on here that slides along, and that works quite smoothly. So I've used these to hinge it, which are bits of 8mm studding, and I've cut a hole in the end of those, or a slot in the end there, maybe you can just see, so that I can screw those right in, and they're now inside the plastic. Um, the middle pieces have a tighter hole in than the outside, so in fact it's screwed into the middle, and it rotates with the middle sections which go through there so it doesn't come undone and it slips through the outside section so that should stay in there if there's any problems I can put a blob of hot glue in each end but that should be fine and hopefully it won't come unscrewed so we need to take each arm off and mount this and then we need to sort out the actuation mechanism so it fits onto this piece of studding here it should go neatly in here like so, um, but I'm going to have to get this um, torso off because basically the part hits the ceiling at the moment and work on it lower down, so I'll get that fitted and then we'll get on with it. And what I've done is um, attach some important bits of safety wood here which actually hold the back up against the ground so it doesn't all go wobbly when I take the arms off. So I need to unbolt this and get this fitted on there. The next cunning mechanism consists of this piece, which um, has a channel in and some screw holes, a small spacer with a bearing screwed on. So there's a spacer with the spacer and the bearing is held on the countersink of a small screw. And that, as you might expect, runs in the channel. A small bracket, which was left over from another project, I'm not sure where, but I kept it in my 3D printed bracket box two springs and a cable tie. So let's have a look at where those go. I've relocated the torso onto my workmate so now I can actually work on the top without the ceiling being in the way. So let's have a look at where those parts went. So we've got these lever parts installed either side and you can hopefully just see, let me just grab the camera and poke it inside. There we go, so there is the spring on the bottom, and that is the slider which slides along as the mechanism opens. 
So I've tried to remove the need um, to have too many heavy motors and therefore more batteries in this. This is not too bad. When I picked this up and moved it, it was okay and I can wear it on my shoulders okay. It's not too heavy at the moment. Hopefully most of the panels to go on are gonna be foam and more 3D printed parts, but um, every motor I add to activate a feature is gonna be weight. So um, what I've tried to do with these is make them so that they're kind of passive so I can basically operate them manually with cables and so on. So um, all this takes now is a, a quick push um, upwards, oh, if I press the right piece, and up it pops. So the way the spring is, it's kind of locked in either position, and then basically a string or another cable can just pull this down and lock that into place. So looking more closely at the mechanism, we're going to end up obviously with a panel that covers the shoulder here, which is the next piece that I'm going to make, and when that pops up, We've got the weapons actually mounted here, which are well away from the head, and that then allows this piece to swivel back with plenty of space, which has one of these panels attached, and it's an angle roughly something like that. So there's then plenty of space for this to swivel backwards, of course, because the actual panel's right back over here. Um, and then when this is back in place, this can flip down, and the panel's gonna be cut nicely around the head, of course, to make this shoulder contour but obviously with it in, the pl in, in place, coming up here, this wouldn't be able to swivel back because the panel's in the way. So hopefully we've achieved what we set out to do there by having that panel with its remote weapons pop right up out of the way over the shoulder bell. Here are the frames for the shoulders themselves, which are going to rise up on that mechanism. So these are basically, again, formers for the rough shoulder shape, including the boxes on the top. So the back is on the right and the front is on the left and um, we've got these other wedge shapes here which go between them and help fix them onto the levers that I've already made. Now this big piece is made in two halves so that it fits on the bed in two pieces and then it'll be acetone welded together. So let's print those out and get them assembled. So I've attached those assemblies as you can see on each shoulder here so we've got the rough um, shape being formed there for the shoulder and obviously those pop open when I open the shoulder pods. All right, so as you can see, I fitted the helmet there so I can get a feel for how this is gonna work. So there's one and there's the other one. So that's gonna be pretty cool. And then we can have weapons pointing out this way on each side, which then fold away and are concealed within the shoulders. That's all I've got for this instalment of Hulkbuster, but don't forget to check out the previous parts if you haven't already, and subscribe to my channel for future updates on this project and other projects.